Hello and welcome to this quick video on the dolphin. Well, not this dolphin, the one that's kind of hiding behind it. Now, that dolphin behind it I'm going to talk about in a moment came about four or five days ago and I've been trying to speak to Atom RC about whether or not I can share it with you, but nobody's answering me because it's Chinese New Year, right? So I decided that forgiveness is easier to get permission, so I'm going to make a video on it anyway. Now, for those of you that have been living under a rock that have, haven't seen any of my other videos on the Atom RC dolphin, let me cover what the dolphin is. This is my favorite, number one favorite plane that I currently have that I'm flying. It can do pretty much everything. The only thing it can't do, it's not an out and out speed machine, although if you upgrade the motor and prop at the back, you can get it to go at a decent lick, but everything else, it's pretty fantastic on. It's easy to launch, it's forgiving, it's stable, it's efficient, it's quiet. There is ridiculous amounts of room for the battery that's my separate nose that i've made up so that it can have an action camera in the front because by default yep actually has room for that there's also ridiculous amounts of room in the back for a flight controller your receiver this has had things like the fpv combat system fitted in it so that's for example why we've got that extra little bit in here that additional scoop was there for when it had analog fpv it doesn't have any more it's now been converted to walk snail it's had two flight controllers in it it has had lots of repairs. The nose is probably about 20% hot glue at the moment. And the servos in the wings have been replaced. I managed to strip the gears out of those. This is the initial one that I had uh, back in 2021. And it has survived lots of crashes. And I've probably had a couple of hundred hours flight time out of this. It is the one that goes with me to the field every single time. I just love it. Now, last year, at the end of last year, Atom RC brought out another model called the Swordfish. Now, the Swordfish is a nice twin, and the Swordfish is also a beautiful model. Uh, Atom RC at the moment are really knocking it out of the park with their designs. So I wasn't sure what this thing was behind me when it arrived, because one of those things I wasn't expecting, I had a notification it was being shipped, but it appears to be a dolphin with some changes. So again, not sure whether this is pre-production, a test unit, a review unit, or what it is, but let me show you what this is. So this is how the dolphin goes together. Again, very simple and straightforward. It's no tool assembly. The wings are designed to just pop into place and are kept in place with a single screw inside the main body. Let's just go through a couple of the key points. In terms of the overall foam and finish, it feels very similar to the dolphins that I've had before. Again, I have that original one that I've just shown into the, in the introduction. I've also bought one that's just in the foam for spares. It comes with the same kind of aerodynamic nose with room for a camera in the front. There's also space in here if you want to put something like a GoPro in small winglets the whole thing looks and feels very similar to the ones that i've had before i haven't glued this one together yet now under the front battery canopy obviously the big thing you'll spot is that this appears now to be black foam i've not had one of these yet in the black foam so if you have let me know if this is unique to this new version or whether that's something they've been doing for a little while um, i quite like the black foam look it breaks it up a little bit under the here in the battery compartment we have the separate nose which again very very similar if not identical to the one that's been out for a little while allows you to put lots of different action camera types in the front that's the one that i tend to fly my model with when i don't have something like the peanut in the nose and then we have a little bag of bits and in here we have camera mounting hardware we have wires to take the power to the camera we also have things like a what appears to be an antenna mount as well so a bag of bits and then in here we have things like the battery strap and a couple of extra rods the screws that are going to hold the wings in place that's nice to see that they're there looks like a spare motor mount and some pieces of rubber too a little bag of screws as well that's normally what you would use to mount a flight controller but you might want to use it to mount something else like an air unit now all the fun stuff is actually under here this dolphin has come with a flight controller 
It appears to be the same flight controller as the one that was shipped inside that swordfish that I looked at at the end of 2022. It used to be their version of the F405 wing from Matek. Kind of has that feel about it. Does have a GPS and that's all wired up and then it's connected out the back into the ESC underneath into the motor. The motor itself is a 2306 2000 kV unit. That's identical to the first ones that I ever got of these. However, the prop is a little bit different to the ones that I've been running on my dolphins. On my original dolphin, it came with a 5x5 prop. This appears to be a 7x4.2 inch right-handed prop. So this is a little bit bigger than the smaller prop that I've been running. Two sets of prop nuts and some additional screws as well. Now I do actually like this flight controller. It's not a bad little unit. It has the buzzer at the side with the USB connection. And again, you can just see how much room is in here. This is one of the things I love about the Dolphin. You don't have to try and cram all of the pieces in. It's all in there. The only thing I would have loved them to do is at the moment, the way it works is as the wing comes off, you just have to thread the long cable through from the wings if you're going to make the wings removable, which I always do. And then you've got to remember where that connector plugs in to the flight controller in order to make everything work. It would have been nice if there'd been some kind of little electrical connections here that would have been made automatically as you slotted the wing home. That would have been a really cute addition. Also, not sure I'm a fan of having the GPS back here. In my other ones that I've built, I tend to put the GPS kind of in this little pocket out here on the side, which is obviously for some kind of antenna relief, but it's actually a neat little place. It kind of keeps it out the way of the high voltage uh, electronics or the high current electronics that are running. Underneath, if we flip it over, looks very similar appears now that the nine gram servos are digital and i can't quite see whether or not they are metal geared but having a digital upgrade is a nice addition same kind of skids at the front and also at the rear too so let's plug this very quickly into inav and see how it comes pre-configured again i don't know whether this is a pre-production unit a review unit test build what it is but let's just see how this has come and how it's configured out the box in inav so let's plug it into the computer and see what we can find so let's click on connect and it does appear to be the latest version of inav version 5.1 so calibration appears to have been done mixer is set for a flying wing it's nothing unusual in that outputs are enabled so if you attach a battery to this potentially you can have the motor running no changes in here in terms of the trimmed position for the control surfaces ports are set up for the gps on uart4 uh, uart1 is set for msp and the serial receiver is uart2 so i'm guessing that means that depending on how it's set up for the receiver uh, TX2 and RX2 would be where you plug in something like Express LRS or Crossfire. Configuration is obviously one of the big tabs. So BMI 270 accelerometer, so this looks very similar to the other one. And air mode permanently enabled. Launch mode isn't turned on, that's very much a personal thing, that's something that I would change. Automatic battery profile selection is it enabled. So there's a couple of things on there that I would potentially change just for the way that I do it. Fail safe is set for return to home, which is great. PID tuning looks like it might need a tune when we go flying. Receiver is an interesting tab. It is definitely set for CRSF. So that's gonna be great for Express LRS. It would be lovely if they sold this with an express lrs receiver in maybe uh, one of the beta fpv the new um, diversity receivers would be a great match for this interestingly in the existing manual that is shipped with it it's classic 
um, basic Atom RC manual. There's nothing in here about the flight controller at all. This is just all assembly. So um, hopefully that is going to be something that they add. Modes tab is set like this. Uh, Again, this isn't how I would do it. If you're going to set up something like CRSF, which is going to be an ex basically an express LRS receiver for the majority of people right now with some Crossfire users too, channel five is more commonly used for ARM, channel six is more commonly used for modes. And they've got the mode set up for manual, horizon, and angle, which is an interesting way of doing it. Everybody has their own particular way of setting up the modes, right? But they have got nav crew set up on channel eight, the nav position hold. This is a really unusual setup. And again, doesn't feel like somebody who really understands iNav has done the basic configuration. So hopefully this will change for the production units. Um, again, I'm not sure whether this is production or not, but I think if you, uh, get one of these, I would recommend, even though you have, don't have to do all the wiring, plugging it into your computer, getting an iNav configurator and just checking it. Again, check my iNav for beginners 2022 series for how I set mine up. On-screen display tab is usually worth a visit to see how that's been configured. Again, this is a very uh, busy setup. Although it's set to auto, this is really designed for a PAL camera system. Uh, units are set to metric. I would obviously change those to uh, Imperial for flying here in the UK. I'm kind of a mile and per hour and feet guy, but you definitely want to come in here. There's an awful lot of information in here that quite frankly would overwhelm a new pilot. I think it would be better to reduce the complexity of the INAF configuration, make it suitable and aim it at newer pilots because those of us that have been flying for a while will know what they're doing and they can make it as complicated as they need to be. In my experience, this kind of layout tends to overwhelm new pilots. They spend all their time looking at the numbers and not where they're going. So again, iNav is flashed, it is set up, the basic stuff is done on here, but I would view this as an almost complete an iNav installation, the configuration just needs to be tweaked so that the last two or three videos in my iNav for Beginners 2020 series would have to be gone through with a model like this. You can just skip all the stuff about flashing the flight controller and doing all the wiring. So there we have it. Atom RC looks like they are replicating what they did with the Swordfish and offering the Dolphin in that iNav ready to go configuration. Um, that is exciting news. I really, really hope that Atom RC embrace this opportunity because at the moment I'm only aware of these guys doing it, but I'm sure others will start soon shipping flight controllers in a plane that's already set up. I know lots of people who watch my videos really like the idea of iNav or Ardu plane for that matter, but just don't want all the hassle of how you wire it up and all the soldering and the plugging in and the configuration and playing with laptops. And I think there is a real opportunity for Atom RC to create a genuine ready to fly, maybe offer one of these, and I hope they do, with something like a standard Express LRS receiver in here. So you just have to bind your radio to it and set up a model, and all that information is detailed in a simple manual that also explains what the three position mode switch on that radio that you've set up will do and how you launch it and all that stuff. If it came pre-trimmed, pre-set up out the box, that would be amazing. For me, I would love there to be a model like the Dolphin that is set up that well. Tuned, trimmed, just ready to go. Just literally set up your radio and bind to it. That would be epic. So I've really got my fingers crossed that Atom RC do this. They still haven't done that with the Swordfish and they have such an opportunity, in my opinion here, to become the go-to builders for iNav. They are very, very close to being able to offer that for all of you that watch my videos that really like the idea of iNav, but just don't want the hassle. So as I get more information from Atom RC as they come back from Chinese New Year, start responding to me, hopefully I'm not in too much trouble for sharing this with you, uh, I will share more information. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.